you know, let me ask you this. There is a theory out there, and one of the Bone Thugs members reignited the theory a few, a couple few years ago. It went viral again, but every few years people talk about it. It's been a thing in hip hop about this secret meeting that allegedly happened in the early Chicago. 90s. Um, I don't know if it was Chicago, but um, let me let me um, let me tell you what I know, and then it'll probably it'll probably spark something. But let, let's take yourself back to like eighty eight, eighty nine. It was it was we were having fun. We were house party generation. We were you know baggy, uh, bright colors, black African medallions, red, bl- black, and green, and and you know things like that. It, it was very mm-hmm. it was a different time. And then almost overnight, we're 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 dressing like gangsters and we're bobbing our head to the chronic album even the music change you know it went from a kid kid and play you know doing funky dances and everybody dancing at a party to now you're bobbing at a party and 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 you know you're you're there to bang or you're staring down people it's it, it turned overnight and there's this theory out there that there was this secret meeting between music executives and prison executives you know to promote this certain lifestyle to promote this certain music to push it down everyone's throat that way they can feed the prison industrial complex now i would love mm-hmm. to know i don't know if you've heard that you probably have um but what are your yeah. thoughts yeah t- talk to me about about your thoughts on that um that's a a, a very good uh theory uh, I'm 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 just gonna say theory. I don't know if it's true or not. But if you look at what took place, you can't really go and say nah to it because um the incarceration rate shot up. Uh and, you know, we, we always are one of those statistics um saying how oh, there's more blacks in prison than you know, more black men are in prison than anyone statistically is really not true. Um, but young black men did get a lot of uh I wanna say heat from 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 a lot of things that took place, that transitional period you're talking about. Yeah, uh I grew up wearing khakis, uh Levi's five oh ones, Romeo's, Coca Sacks, Wallabies, Chucks, that was me when I was little. So when the the, 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 the we had the, uh, the, the 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 medallion black you know red black and green and all that transition into the khakis and and house shoes and stuff like that, um, there was a significant amount of uh, blacks finding themselves incarcerated. So I would I'm just saying that and looking back at it. I can't go and shake my head no to that because it just looked like it was done by design. Mm. Um, the record company allowed records to come out uh, talking about blasting on a fool, um, smoking a nigga. Um, you know, it came, it became more accepted now to the point where um the uh, radio stations is like, yeah, we love this song called Kill a Nigga Fast, but yeah, you know, for radio play, you're going to have to, oh yeah, we're going to say, uh, uh, Papa Make a Laugh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, something like that. So, you know, you had the radio say, okay, okay, so we're going to play this and everybody know the original, I go, but for radio and for the FCC, you have to, you can't have all that profane language on the air. So, um, I want to say, yeah, it did spark a lot of, uh, it, it did intensify a lot of the uh, killings that had died down because in LA from about 83, 84 to 88, 89, the game culture was wild. I mean, we was wild with our West real yeah, bad over here. Way worse and, than it is now. You know, Things are bad now, but yeah, way worse than 80s. It was now. way worse. You know, we, we, you know, I can remember Tom Brokaw saying, L.A. is the game capital of the world. Mm-hmm. I can remember L.A. being on the list. I mean, they, they went and made the list of Top the murder capital yeah, of, the, of the nation. You know, and L.A. was up there for like three, four years straight because yeah. of the gang culture. So um, prison did find itself being heavily populated with 
a lot of those uh, behind the trigger or supposed to be behind the trigger. You know, funeral homes that are are are, are multi millionaires right now. That's when they made all their money from the from the eighty three yeah. on up. Yeah, facts. You know, it was like that was a thing to do, man. On a funeral home, you don't you don't get back to paper. Trip on this, dog. Day. My mentor uh, told me a story. He's about 15, 20 years. He's actually about 20 years older than I am. Uh, he told me a story about a fella that he knew, one of his really good friends who owned a funeral home during the riots. And he said that when the riots happened, and then, remember there was that, that brief gang truce, you know, pretty much throughout the city. There was, a, you know, Crips and Bloods got together, and it, it was very brief. Oh, yeah. But, but yeah, he, he homeboy said, um, man, I'm about to go out of business if these niggas don't start killing each other again. Man, uh, <laughs> yeah, that, Cold there was there was nothing there was nothing happening. Um, they were they were relying on old people to die, uh, or, or somebody who was stricken with disease for the, the whole. I want to say two weeks. I want to say two weeks of, of actual treaty time because mm-hmm. um, I, I wind up going to a party and wind up having. It, I'm in there partying. Next thing I know, I'm DJing. It. Uh, tell me about that, dog, because that's a very, for anyone who doesn't know, that was a very pivotal moment in Los Angeles history. It was very brief, unfortunately, but when the it started in Watts, when the Crips and Bloods united, you know, right around the time, because we had Natasha Harlins, we had Rodney yeah. King, we had the riots, like we were just done with all the killing and all the bullshit, yeah. not to mention homicides of upwards of 2,000 homicides in, in in LA alone, you know, and you're, right. you're there DJing a party at a gang truce. Talk to me about that day. Yeah. So we go, we over in the forty neighborhood, and uh, you know I used to kick it over there a lot. So we go to the party, and it, it was crazy. They was trying four dollars to get in. Party was on Vernon, right on, right on, right next door to Normandy Elementary. And uh, we go in there, and uh, homie, he really didn't charge us. You know, he was a homie. It was the hood. So we up with there, and who I can't remember who was DJing, but he was garbage. And uh, somebody said, "Cuz we need a DJ, there DJ, there." I said, "Man, I'm here to party." Homie came out with a hundred dollars. He said, "Come on, homie." So I get on the turntables, man. That was uh, Avalon's was up in there. It was the forties that threw the party, but the Avalon's was up in there. The Black Pink Stones from the Jungles was there. The Thirties was there. Uh, uh, from Hoover's was there, man, and it was like I'm tripping out because I'm DJing, and everybody in there is chill from different neighborhoods, and it was so crazy that I remember when we was leaving, I go outside and I see these fools fighting, but nobody stopped them. Come to find out that these dudes is in in forty neighborhood. Dude was bleeding. He was on my car. I said, man, get off my car, homie. And they was like, my bad, homie, my bad. So they grabbed the dude. These are dudes that just beat him up. Come to find out, these dudes from Avalon just put this dude on Avalon in 40 neighborhood. Mm. And I'm scratching my head and I'm laughing. And the people I'm with, they're like, what's so funny? I said, y'all realize that this dude just got put on his hood in another hood. He's from Avalon, but he got put on Avalon in 40. And they was like, uh huh, and we just all laughed and shook our head and took off, you know. But yeah, it was it was great. I, I, that was one of the peace treaty parties, and I went to another one. Uh, I did get another one in Watts, and uh, somebody just called me at the last minute. Said, "Man, I need a DJ for the night." I said, "I got you." I shoot over there, and I'm hungry, so I go to a little burger spot across from the Nicholson. And uh, I'm in all blue, back turn. All I heard was, what's up, blood? And I'm like, ooh. Damn. I look down at my feet. And ooh. I turn around. I said, I said, what's up, homie? They said, uh, where you from, homie? I said, I ain't from all over here. They said, it's all good. You look like you, you look like you're a crib. I said, I just wear blue. They said, it's all good, blood. What you, what you, what you, what you getting to eat? We got you. They brought my food for me. And, uh, I said, man, I'm deep in a party. And they said, I forgot what street was on. I think it was on success. They said, so-and-so, so-and-so. I said, I don't know. Over here on success, um, this thing was structured. Yeah. Oh, blood, we be through there. We coming through there. Man, I went over there. The grapes. 
black uh, it was grapes and um bounty hunters mm. um some of some of Compton was there um uh, uh man the monas the uh the carvers um some hoovers man some uh uh, uh at the parks uh, was over there some of everything over here another the party i did there. i didn't know it was a little party and uh and yeah, he's like okay it's supposed to be the two o'clock man two o'clock it looked like more people were there than when it started at nine they said oh you can't leave i said huh no i said man i got me the two o'clock get some money we got two more hundred dollars. How long? I said, okay, we good to go. <laughs> Kept it going. Yeah, I had to DJ that one by myself. My boy helped me take all my equipment over there. I had to, you know, naturally I'm going to break him off. But yeah, we didn't leave that spot till like 4 30 in the morning. Man. Damn. And I was just like tripping because I'm like, the one going to come through here and shut it down. Nah, no, I wasn't no problems or nothing. Mm mm mm. So yeah, man, that was a watch. Yeah, that was a, a great time, man. That was a great story. time. 